Kawasan Falls The magnificent Kawasan Falls in Badian municipality are still in Cebu's south. After camping, some hikers from Osmina Peak traverse to Kawasan Falls, although you can instead continue straight to Kawasan via Barili. Kawasan Falls is a three-stage cascade of clear turquoise water from mountain springs of Mantalongan mountain range. The Philippines' waterfalls are a jewel. Kawasan Canyoneering is a renowned tourist destination in Cebu's south. The canyoneering journey begins with Canlaub Falls and continues downstream to Kawasan Falls. All tourists are accompanied by local accredited guides who support activities including strolling, leaping, swimming, climbing, and abseiling through the streams. Most importantly, be prepared to be amazed when canyoneering. Pescador Island Pescador Island is located in the town strait, a few kilometers off the coast of Moalboal in Cebu Island south. It's one of Cebu's greatest diving destinations. Its island reef is a 5 to 10 meter, 15 minus 35 feet, sandy slope covered in soft coral. There's also a hard coral covered wall that drops down to around 40 meters, 130 feet. There are many various varieties of colorful sea creatures, including sharks, on that wall. It's a good idea to bring your underwater camera so you can photograph the stunning corals and various marine animals. The Sardine Run is another major tourist attraction in this area that is growing in popularity. It's incredible to be able to swim alongside millions of sardines also known as herring. Tumalog Falls few kilometers away from the whale shark attraction is the Tumalog Falls. It is also situated in the municipality of Oslob. Locals call this body of water, the, Toslob Falls, or, Magambic Falls. Tumalog Falls is a curtain-like waterfalls that covers the entire cliff with cool and clear water. Moss embraces the rocks of the cliff which filters the water and gives a curtain effect. It is one of a kind and definitely stunning. Hence, this has become one of many's favorite Cebu tourist spots. Sumalan Island Sandbar The small but beautiful island of Sumalan is still in Oslob, where you may admire the sandbar. Sumalan Island Sandbar is particularly popular due to its stunning turquoise waters and pure white sands. It resembles a photogenic and enthralling tropical paradise that attracts a wide range of visitors. The island is owned by Blue Water Resorts, Therefore staying overnight is not permitted unless you are staying at Sumalan Blue Water Island Resort. But don't worry, they provide day trips that include lunch and activities like snorkeling, hiking, fishing, paddling, and more. Colon Street The Basilica del Santo Neo is located on Colon Street, the country's oldest street. The roadway was founded in 1565 by Spanish colonizer Miguel López de Legazpi. He named the boulevard after Cristobal Colón, not Christopher Columbus. This location is close to the Cebu ports and serves as a crossroads for early trade. As a result, this street is home to Cebu's earliest businesses. It is still a magnet for businesses, theaters, pubs, shopping malls, and other establishments. If you're looking for an inexpensive, pasalubong, or souvenir, these streets are the place to go. The iconic Sinalig festival is often celebrated at The heritage of Cebu Monument The monument lies at Colon Street depicts Cebu's important historical events. Parian Plaza is home to the Cebu Heritage Monument. Eduardo Castrillo, a Cebuano artist, designed the monument out of brass, concrete, steel, and bronze. The sculpture was started in July 1997 and finished in December 2000. Christian conversions, Spanish occupation, battles against foreign colonizers, a significant Christian figure, and a certain Philippine president are among the monument's elements. To learn more about the details, 
Go to this place, which is firmly planted in the city's core. Yap San Diego Ancestral House The Yap San Diego Ancestral House is located directly across from the Heritage of Cebu Monument. This ancestral home is one of the Philippines' oldest structures. Built during Spanish era, between 1675-1700, coral stones and egg whites make the walls. Molave. Balayong and terracotta glue the roof together. The home was erected during the Spanish occupation, but the owner, Don Juan Yap, is a Chinese businessman, therefore the design is a blend of Chinese, Spanish, and Filipino influences. The house's furniture is made of native Cebu materials, and religious icons adorn the walls, reflecting the residents' religiosity. Jesuit House of 1730 or Museo de Perian. The Jesuit House of 1730 is located in the same location as Yap Sandigo Ancestral House and just a short walk away. This is where the Philippines' second-highest-ranked Jesuit priest used to live. The house is held together by coral stones and terracotta, much like Yap Sandigo's house. However, the place is quite large, with high ceilings and walls. The home also houses several ceramics discovered during the Ming Dynasty, which have been a meeting venue for early Cebuano aristocrats. Casa Gerardo Museum. You may reach to Casa Gerardo Museum from the Jesuit house by walking for about five minutes. Juan Gerardo, the first Cebuano bishop, lived in this house turned museum. The mansion was originally built in the 1800s and owned by a Spanish businessman named Juan Isidro de Gerardo. Casa Gerardo became a museum in 1980 according to the Ramon Aboides Foundation's Cultural Heritage Program. The museum focuses on Philippine culture from the 1800s to the 1900s. Fort San Pedro General Miguel López de Legazpi, a Spanish general, oversaw the construction of the fort. De Legazpi considered use it against Muslim warriors. Other settlers, though, exploited it for other purposes as time went. When the Americans seized Cebu, this was where their men lived. In this fort, Americans also educated Cebuanos. The fort was also utilized as a barrack, a prison, and a hospital by the Japanese during their colonialism. The historic significance of the country's smallest and oldest fort is evident. Museo Sugbo Sugbu Museo, located four blocks from Fort San Pedro, is a museum cheval because it was once Cebu's provincial jail, it is now a big museum. In 1869, Domingo de Escondrillas, Cebu's lone architect at the time, designed it. This was used as a prison for Filipino captives during the Spanish occupation. Americans, on the other hand, used this location as a stable for their horses throughout the American period. During the Japanese occupation, this location was also used to arrest Filipino opponents. Cebu Provincial Detention and Rehabilitation Center, CPDRC, is now located here. Cebu Safari and Adventure Cebu Safari and Adventure Park is the Philippines' largest zoo. It also has Asia's longest zipline which is 1.2 kilometers long. This zoo houses a variety of plant and animal species, including unusual tigers and birds. Cebu Safari and Adventure Parks, which is on par with major zoos, takes you to the breathtaking Carmen Mountains. The zoo trip takes at least three hours. What is more interesting and unique about this spot is you can enjoy many thrilling activities hiking and canyoning in the waterfalls, biking, swaying in the zip lines, and many more. Anho World Theme Park Anho World Theme Park is the largest theme park in Visayas and a source of pride for Cebu because of its world-class rides and designs. Anho World, 
as the name suggests, is located in Minglanila, about an hour's drive from Cebu City. It's like taking a fast trip across the world, seeing different places and customs. This amusement park is a miniature Disneyland, complete with thrilling rides and a snow world. Fun is the most appropriate word to use to describe the event. This is a must-see adventure and entertainment location. Osmeña Peak in Mantalongan, Dalaget pronounced. Dalaget, you can climb the Osmeña Peak of Cebu. Osmeña Peak is the highest peak on the island, standing at 1,013 meters above sea level. These hills are made mainly of limestones with sharp jutting peaks that are ideal for photographing. The peak is part of the Mantalongan mountain range, which extends all the way to Badian. It is considered a twin to Bohol's Chocolate Hills. Hiking and camping are the major activities here. The majority of hikers favor one of two hiking trails. The first begins in Badian and ends in Brgy Leong, passing via Kawasan Falls. The Kamotes Island we travel from the city to the northern portion of Cebu, where we visit Kamotes Island, a magnificent island. It takes roughly an hour to get from Cebu City to Danao Port, where you board a boat to the island. Traveling by water from Danao Port takes two hours. Kamotes Island offers a variety of attractions. You can visit a lake, a cave, an islet, and, of course, beaches in a single day. It is preferable to stay longer than a day to get the most out of your visit. Visit Santiago Beach, which has a long, white shoreline, Mangodlong Rock, which has stunning blue and green waters, and Lake Danau, which has a tranquil green lake where you may use a kayak to land on the mini land in the center, Bukilat Cave which you can swim in with its fresh cold waters, Tulong Diot which is a paradise-like islet with its white sand and alluring waters. Other equally great places are Timubo Cave, Holy Crystal Cave, Paraiso Cave, Buho Rock Beach Resort, Busai Falls, Baka Beach. Again, Kamotes Island is abounding in spots to go to, stay there for three days for best vacation experience. Sarau Flower Garden The Sarau Flower Garden, located in the Busai District, is a more elevated site. Going there is like visiting the Netherlands, which is why this tourist destination is known as, Little Amsterdam. Silosia, called, Burles, by locals, blooms in flamboyant red, purple, yellow, and orange give it an Amsterdam feel. The windmill that has been installed and the cool breeze add to the magnificent scene. As a result, the guests get a distinct, touristic vibe. 10,000 Roses of Cebu. On the neighboring island of Mokton, the Cebu 10,000 Roses may be discovered. Or this Roses Cafe and more is encircled by 10,000 LED-powered fake roses. The bulk of visitors come at dusk to take in the beautiful sunset and see the roses lit up at night. The cafe's owner, who is also an interior designer, also wants to create a romantic atmosphere for couples. The cafe delivers exquisite dishes that you may enjoy with your sweetheart while sharing a pleasant atmosphere. Cebu Ocean Park Cebu Ocean Park is a new attraction that launched in August 2019. Cebu Ocean Park is the largest oceanarium in the Philippines. This is a perfect place for young kids because it is accessible to those who are near the city and is certainly educational and entertaining. Located just behind the large SM Seaside Mall and beside the wondrous San Pedro Calungsod Chapel, this is a perfect place for young kids because it is accessible to those who are near the city and is surely educational and entertaining. Thousands of aquatic creatures have taken up residence in aquariums of various forms and sizes. The tot's inquiring brains are drawn to fascinating-looking marine animals. 
Furthermore, this site is open from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. every day. Do not miss out on visiting this park with your family. Magellan's Cross The navigator Ferdinand Magellan was chosen by King Charles I of Spain to search for the Spice Islands. Magellan was able to sail the world in this manner and eventually land in the Philippines in 1521. He arrived in Cebu on March 15, 1521, to be precise. The majority of Cebuanos accepted Christianity once Magellan revealed it to them. On April 21, 1521, Magellan placed the cross, which represents Christianity, at this location. The original Magellan's cross is protected by an encasement. Oslob whale sharks You can swim with the Oslob whale sharks, also known as the Tuki, in the area. Oslob municipality is famed for its old churches and gorgeous beaches, but the gentle giants known as whale sharks have made it even more attractive. Local fishermen interacted with the whale sharks by feeding them. Until a huge number of visitors arrived in Oslo to see the feeding. As a result, these tourists snorkel or dive with whale sharks. Oslo whale shark watching is one of the top items on the bucket lists of tourists visiting Cebu due to the unique experience. Most importantly, you are not permitted to touch the whale sharks if you have a close encounter with them. Temple of Leah The Temple of Leah located along the Cebu Transcentral Highway, is the next tourist destination. There are 24 chambers in the temple, including a museum, an art gallery, and a library. This location also houses Leah's favorite and personal items. The temple was also inspired by Greek and Roman architecture. The Cebu Taj Mahal is decorated with colossal lion statues and a majestic staircase with brass angels. Basilica del Sto. Nino the earliest Christian church in the Philippines is located directly next to Magellan's Cross. Basilica del Sto Nio was founded in 1565 by Fray Andres de Urdaneta and Fray Diego de Herrera, O.S.A. This church houses the Sto Nio, statue of Ferdinand Magellan, which depicts the Holy Child Jesus. On April 14, 1521, he used this stone neo to convert Cebu's chieftain Humabon and his wife to Christianity. This church is known as the mother and head of all churches in the Philippines, by the Sea of Rome. Cebu Taoist Temple Cebu Taoist Temple at Cebu City's Beverly Hills Subdivision this Chinese-style architecture temple was established in 1972 by the Chinese Taoism community. The creative structures of this temple had made it popular. Even non-believers in Taoism pay a visit to the temple. You may get a great view of the city and even Mokton Island from there. This is, of course, the ideal location for Taoists to pray or meditate. Bantayan Island A gem awaits you if you travel to Cebu's northernmost point, Bantayan Island. This is one of Cebu's most popular tourist destinations. Throughout fact, it becomes well-known in the country after a film is shot there. Many people visit Sta. Lucia to enjoy the beautiful beaches. Bantayan. Fay you'll need another two to three hours to go to Hagnai a port from Danao. This is the point from where you can take a ferry to Bantayan Island. The ferry ride takes an hour and a half. You can't go wrong with Bantayan Island because of its inexpensive accommodations and world-class surroundings. The peacefulness and gorgeous waves of its oceans will enchant you. Simala Church The famous Simala Church is located in Sabanga, Cebu's southern town. Simala Cathedral extends its colossal arm as if to welcome religious pilgrims from all around the world. The design is based on cathedrals in Europe. Not only is the structure gorgeous, but it also displays a deeply rooted tradition among Cebuanos, the essence of Roman Catholicism. This church is home to monks who are dedicated to the Virgin Mary. Believers flock to see the massive statue of the Virgin Mary 
which many see as miraculous. Visitors are also drawn to the several Marys dressed in various cultural motifs. Cebu tourist spots are mixture of historic sites, gorgeous beaches, and fun activities. This Cebu tourist spots guide is arranged by geographical location so you can go to several places in one trip. You may also check our Cebu City Tour package for hassle-free trip. There are still many places to visit in Cebu. So start packing your bags.